What's up, Embody? Today on the Yours Truly podcast, I have McMosive in the virtual studio. McMosive, or McMo as he is affectionately known in certain corners of this little corner of the internet, has a reputation for his hilarious and sophisticated comedic quips and what is cryptically known as the hive mind around these here parts. The hive mind is what Grim Grizz and Paul Vanderclay commonly refer to when speaking about the comments section on posted videos, and more specifically the live chat that accompanies live video premieres here on YouTube. In my recent conversation with Brendan Graham Dempsey, I did not release a premiere with the live chat feature, and McMo's first comment was, I crave the hive mind. Recently, McMo has been featured as a co-host on different channels, including Grim Grizz's channel, as well as on the Friday Morning Nameless channel's show, Friday Morning Fragments. McMo is an artist. He's a musician, and I know that he is married. His Twitter profile reads, I make sounds, I tweet words, I eat food, I sing songs, I read books, I net flicks. I also know he has a special place in his heart for the philosopher Kierkegaard. In some of my recent conversations, I waxed and discussed my perspective on high versus low church worship and the psychological differences therein. McMo has been quick to point out the real and meaningful significance found in lower church worship settings as many of this, this space's conversations flow downstream from Orthodox Christian Jonathan Peugeot, and even Jordan Peterson has been critical of hippie worship. At times, us Christian wa worship rock and rollers can get a little self-conscious. I invited McMo onto the Yours Truly podcast to give voice, critique, and converse more deeply and specifically about this con topic. So, without further delay, I give you McMosive. Hi, this is Christian Baxter. And you're listening to Yours Truly, a place we go to think out loud. Make of You're muted. You're muted. It's probably and, good. Uh, I was uh, I was <laughs> making just a dumb joke about the intro music, saying Fl slow f slow fade on the floor toms. To uh, get us in. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah, in your the in your music director. Oh man. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we actually so we, we yeah. yeah go ahead. Go Sorry. Well, I, I that well, already sparked so many ideas. It. Yeah. Yeah. Hit them. Go, go for it. We know well, what we're doing. So, yeah. So we never actually uh, at the church that I worked at we we did contemplate the kind of in ear um, directing kind of a thing, and we we actually decided against it uh for for a few reasons um but the the main one being that we despite what you might think we actually preferred kind of having things more planned out and less spur of the moment so we weren't the type of uh it wasn't the type of service where the towards the end of the sermon the band kind of hops on stage and starts playing some background keys and some synths so it wasn't and it wasn't it also wasn't the type where like uh you know uh the singer could just say like we're gonna sing that again and you know the whole church like that was like a maybe like a once a month type of situation and only if you know it, it depended on who was running the slideshow that week you know with the words because if you you know if you do that on the wrong volunteer then it you throw <laughs> off you know 14 <laughs> 1400 people Jeez. yeah <laughs> yeah you're i mean well you're I've, I've heard you say where you're from when you were talking to jordan hall and so you are in elevation new spring country very yep. very much um, which yep. for those of the people that don't know, huge mega church land, huge, like uh, rock and roll, huge worship, uh, music culture in that part of America is like, uh, I mean, it's basically like, well, it's the East coast Bethel versus yeah. Hillsong and passion. It's, it's like elevation right there. Yeah. And so we were, yeah, we were certainly on the more L or not the elevation. We wanted our music to be as good as elevation, but our. Uh, theology was closer to like a passion city or even probably a uh, what's the one the big vi the village out in Texas yeah. that was our that was kind of our north star for a lot of things was how's yeah. the what, what is the village doing you know Chandler uh, what was the name of their worship guy I actually I talked to him before yeah, Michael he's, Bleaker. Bleaker yep Bleaker yeah yeah he spoke to our worship pastor you know my boss as well um, and then we also had a connection up to um, up there by St. Louis. It's um, Journey. Me, uh, what's the guy's name? They're Aaron kind Bauer. of 
not that one not that one they're reformed but they also believe in some some miracles what's it called sovereign, sovereign grace. grace that's the one yep jinx sovereign grace yeah so that was kind of our um you know that was our those were our kind of what we were looking up to they were slightly bigger than us um well, actually, they they were quite a bit bigger than us, but they were the next kind of step up on the mega church ladder, you know. So yep. we looked at so looked at them. You for were on thing. staff. You yep. were on staff yep. at a church. Yes, yeah. So I was the director of media and production, um, and it started as me just volunteering to do, run sound because I grew up running sound at my small the small little Baptist church I I grew up at that I tell stories about. Um, and so to kind of move from there, and there was kind of a uh, a uh, overlap where I was I was going to the low church and to this like uh, PCA Presbyterian church, uh, high liturgy type of thing, mm -hmm. uh, and the mega church all at once. Which it wasn't a mega church at that point. It was it was only like maybe three hundred people. Three hundred. I mean, that's still pretty huge, but. Um, but they were playing but, the game, man. They were in the game. <laughs> well, that's the thing is we didn't know we were playing the game until it was already too late. You know, mm. it was kind of it was more of like a look at what God's doing all, you know, the building can't hold any more people. We're getting, you know, called on like the fire marshal showing up and it just makes you feel like you're, you know, in the story with Jesus cool. where people are falling out of the windows and like being revived. And and then it honestly, like I can mark kind of this one of the one of the mistakes I think we made as a church and the elder the elder board made um, was they decided to build a brand new sanctuary a big one and we and we we had thought considered like moving to a different um you know buying an old church that had you know or merging with a church in order to like take over the property or whatever and you know none of those things ended up working out and i think we must have gotten a pretty decent um loan or whatever for the new building and that kind of was a little bit of the beginning of the end i think for that kind of um for just for us pretending to not be kind of a, a big organization i mean it was it was right before then or right after then that they hired like we we hired our first kind of non-ministry um leadership executive yeah, yeah executive pastor yeah so and he had come from that dude had come from passion city and so he he and he had kind of he had like started he was an entrepreneur so he had started some like online companies so he kind of had both of those skill sets, you know, um, wasn't a very kind man. <laughs> wasn't a very, uh, you know, I, it would be, he had a lot of the fruit of business success and not a lot of fruit of the spirit. We'll just put it that way. Um, but it, yeah, it was a completely insane time because everyone on staff was an outlier, was excellent at what they did was trying to get better, um, was humble. You know, it's, it's kind of one of those things is like, I don't think any mega church is like doing it right, but to be in the inner circle or whatever, and to see some of the giftings of some of these people, like you just can't believe it. And for it to all be kind of running well for a season, it's just, it's intox, it's intoxicating. Like I can't, it's like, yeah. uh, there's a reason why the mega church pastors get away with stuff. And it's because you're basically Success. improved it's success yeah it's success and it's all these lives changed uh and this feeling of permanence and health and mm -hmm. community and you know and it just and because it's such a big heaving thing every sunday it's very easy to kind of push things push and and this is for better and for worse but like to push little to forgive and forget a lot of little things a lot of little things and everybody's doing that usually on the inside, you know, and then um, but you can't do that forever. Like you can't put stuff, you know, you, obviously you can't put stuff in the dark and expect it to stay there. Uh, even even if you're a successful mega church, whatever you try to hide is going to end up kind of coming to coming back to bite you because there's no such thing as hiding. Like we of all people should know that, you know. Yeah, 100 percent. So it's I mean. I was in the church that I was a pastor of was not a, for our town probably peaked out around, you know, said town of 10,000 peaked out around somewhere around 500, you know, on probably like 500 getting to be like four to six times a year. And then like, you know, somewhere between 350 and, you know, but like yep. church growth principles though, pretty solid team. Um, you know, really, you know, but 
not in like you know not what the whole thing even with the with that whole movement is also it has in many ways has to be centered around population centers like for you like to for that for that model to really be what people be like oh i wish i could have a mega church well it's like you probably need to be in a city because some of it's a yeah. population ratio at the yep. same time um you know i mean you're you said you're you're around 30 like I, I i got involved in like itinerant stuff around 2005 and so then i was doing like camp ministry through southern baptist camp ministry called like fuge camps yep, and I know like about I fuge did camps that. yeah centrifuge. i did that i think i went to centrifuge yeah you're even right there next to you and jordan hall next to old ridgecrest that's just right yeah, down the street my, there. I mean, yep my parents went to ridgecrest every single year my, my whole life until we we went to the started going to the mega church uh, uh so yeah. they, they make their own camp yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty but yeah much, i mean so know. like did that on staff for five years at that camp like full-time and then would do contract work with them and you know until i upended my life and um you know like you said because things don't things will be found the truth will be found out one way or the other and so but all the values all the the i the the desire for even like we were more in that re reform stream too like so the values get they get tweaked a little bit like you're saying mm -hmm. like it's not there's some weird boundaries actually you know about like that are that that are in that space which i think probably were good but ultimately the whole thing still suffers from the same problem i think to a degree some of that's some of that's self-correcting some of it probably not but um, and we can drill down on the, some of that here in a minute, but I just wanted to kind of like, like connect with you, with you on that, that itinerant band that I had, Christian Baxter band, uh, you know, was like basically started out as high school friends. Everyone starts getting married, start interviewing professional musicians, start like, oh, okay. And, and then like, and it's that, that, that desire as we were like kind of wrapping up that, uh, sh that, that show conversation last night on Friday morning, nameless channel. Like I, I got a little angsty because of what it's like to be in two different contexts of okay what are these values the, these personal values these pastoral values versus with my band on the road it's like basically do like do this as good or better than the band that wrote it you know like mm -hmm. and, and do the that's like the aim and yeah and so i kind of was in and I had to, I was constantly having to reconcile like cognitively because I think at places, especially in the cultures where you're at, with like when I mentioned New Spring and I mentioned Elevation, like, or even Summit out there too. Like, I mean, they're, these big churches uh, are creating that value that I was doing like on the road, but they were bringing that completely into the church. And, um, and there's tension there. And, and you, you projected a little onto me rightly so about what maybe was my grievance was that I was cutting people. My grievance was that I didn't cut people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that, it, you know, like it would have been one way or the other though, I think like, yeah. you, because there's that. And so what is that? Is that a problem? How do you see that? How does that fit with every, you know, th things talking about high and low worship. I don't know if we can like, yeah get these yeah. things going together yeah i'm i see i see the kind of the the pieces on the board that you've laid out and yeah i definitely would love to try to see if we can't put them together and see what comes out um but yeah i mean that was to me that was the biggest um pain point for kind of you know when me and the worship pastor were sitting down and you know he, he had you know final say or whatever on um because we 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 didn't have the same band every week, so we made a lot of decisions to try to balance out uh, giving people an opportunity to serve, you know, and versus letting the people who are the best musicians play every week, so that the worship is good, uh, so that it can match the level of the sermon, so that it can match the level of the graphic design, so that you you know, so like there very and there very much was kind of a healthy uh, competition and kind of a i would say it was a very it was a very male space on staff like there was a lot of females behind the scenes doing 
you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of thankless work. Um, but there was also kind of a very much a machismo kind of Mar. We later found out that this a similar thing was going on in Mars Hill, um, but just kind of a hyper complementarianism, uh, a, a real kind of mutual uh, honoring and respecting of uh, whatever the opposite of passivity was. Like the worst thing that you could do is be passive, and so there was like a lot of you know that kind of alpha hierarchy stuff going on, and so. Um, but yeah, there were absolutely, I remember some of the hardest conversations being like, what do we do? And we have this like faithful servant of the Lord who, because, and that's the other thing too, is that like, when you're at a mega church like that, it just becomes a magnet for all the, like, uh, all the churches that are failing horrifically, you know? So when a small church, the pastor has an affair, uh, you know, 20, 30 people leave that church of a hundred. Well, where do they end up? Almost always they end up at the mega church where they can be a faceless, nameless person for a season and maybe they get plugged in or maybe they move on to another church, but that's kind of how most mega churches work. And because of the quality of whether it be the preaching or the music or just the vibes, you know, the architecture, there's I tons of things. This whole system, like the front, yeah. the, uh, what is it? The front, what is that? What is that called? I can't remember now. Like where you first step foot into the church, uh, first impressions or like, like making, yeah being intentional with even how you get kids into Sunday school and like, yep. like, I don't think people realize how, how like micromanaged the whole thing is. It's not like this natural, it's like from the moment your car parks to the moment that you get back in your car, there's like purpose and intention with almost every step. Yep. And so we would do, we would, and we and would and also that's what makes it easy for people to get in. Right. Sorry. And so the other thing that Sorry. was happening, though, is that we were kind of uh, doing a thing where we we wanted to focus so much on the preaching of the word, we'll say, because that's kind of the phrase that's used, you know, in the circles is like the preaching of the word. Um, and so like, uh, you know, we and because we had been a small too small of a space for so long, it was kind of like a standing room only situation. And so. We were kind of openly until the new building got built. We were kind of very open about like, this is a, a this place is alive. Like there is going to be people screaming or like you know babies crying. Uh, you know the the uh, the communion plates might not get passed in the right order. Uh, you know somebody a a drum, you know the drums might be a little too loud this week or or not loud enough. Like I'm just kind kind of describing some of the, um the situations in which the because of the elders the church at, when i arrived to it in the first couple of years we intentionally left things kind of rough around the edges but it was it was it, you know it was self aware response to all of the churches that we thought were focusing on the wrong things um mm -hmm. but but once you get into once you start growing and once you have competent intelligent energetic people on the inside every single piece of the machine starts to be thought about and starts to get tweaked and starts to get even a B tested to see, okay, do more people grab the, this bulletin or this bulletin? And I'm, you know, I, I want to be grateful <laughs> because I, I don't think that, you know, we could have gone a lot further. You know, we didn't even like when I, when I was in charge of the website, I made sure that we like never had like a give button on the website. Cause I was like, this is just crazy. You know, like, so, so I think we did a lot of things right in that situation, like in those scenarios, but it to to think that it all just kind of happens is just like hilarious. Uh, I guarantee you can go to any mega church and there will be some dude who's probably shaped like me, maybe paler, maybe older, uh, and you know, and he's going to know how every single system in the church works, and he might even you know have a smiley face. But I'm telling you, on the inside, he is stressed and grumpy, and he wishes that nobody else would talk to him because he has got the weight of the the weight of an infrastructure. Of a you know like a Cirque du Soleil yeah. level production, uh, and so yeah, like there's just like to your point, yeah, there absolutely is so much stuff that goes into it, um, and when you compare that to you know the quote unquote divine liturgy, um, the types of stuff that go into that is not the same at all, you know, like the type of preparations, it's not a, it's not about the uh, quote unquote technology as much as it is the you know the spiritual technology, it's a uh, the preservation, you know. like the preservation of a form. Yeah. Right. It's, it's maybe a simple 
or a similar impulse, but like with temp with a completely different uh, framework or something. And yeah, I, I think that's that's probably true. And to and probably would there would probably be like I don't know who who decides how those church those church buildings are built, but I'm sure that the people that do have some of that like I don't know what we you know that uh, neuroticism that that we're talking about with like the mega church model. And I mean, yeah, I, I think the, I don't, the whole thing, the whole thing for me about I, that, that I think is that the, the, the fancy word we use around these here parts, like telos, I, is the thing that, where you've probably been like, Baxter, get off this like thing or like, hey, there's other things around here that are that are good and important. Is um is I think that that's where it's like if the telos is reach as many people as you can, which is evangelism, which is evangelicalism, then then that's gonna be the telos. That and, and that's I and ultimately we can say it's the preaching of the word or something like that, but like I think it's like reach or grow. I think right. that's like the, and so what I think, what I've experienced, cause that's, that's like the psych, that's like the psycho psychological thing or the psychotechnology is like, is get, get people saved, get people in the seat. Like that's kind of the thing. And what does it take to do that? Oh, it takes doing these things. And so they're actually are below like the, uh, so, uh, like uh making good music is actually not for necessarily the sake of making good music it's making good music so that people get here or something or like be dynamic or i don't i don't know there's something yeah. about that and then yeah. where if there's a way i don't know if it's even true anywhere because <laughs> <laughs> i haven't been there but in my but like some kind of like or if there's something that kind of points your mind as a telos of, of like what is something like the worship of the triune God, the telos, if if that actually is communing with God or something, I don't know. It's not necessarily right. going to be to reach everybody. And so that's that's why I think that um that I'm kind of pointing to more and i see that kind of in other space want... <laughs> in other spaces go for uh, it sorry yeah I, I i can't help but but make a, a sarcastic joke but it's uh you you want you want the right. liturgy or the service to be uh you know less popular so that it can be uh better or something like that if it that because i guess the the thing that no, that's no, that's un, mean, that's not exactly what you're know, saying I'm, yeah that's not exactly what you're saying, but like, I, to me, I think my perspective is like to your point of can you even do it with like a can you even do mega church with the proper telos kind of a thing, and I think in a way yes, in a way no, uh, because let's see how to put this. Um, the okay, so the mega church that I went to that I got kind of that I got fired from and excommunicated from or whatever. They're still going strong. Like they've planted, you know, they've they've planted two or three uh churches. Like they're they're doing great without me. They didn't need me, you know, like they're they're doing fine. My my mm. parents still go to that church, still getting fed, still participating mm. in small groups, you know. Uh my dad's a deacon. Like uh so in a way, I do think that like and, and it's kind of to the PVK. I can't remember he he was on this maybe like a year or, or ago or so maybe even more, but just kind of talking about how mega churches do a lot of good things. Right. And, and to me, I sum that up when I just say they're called mega churches for a reason, you know, like, uh, any, any given city, maybe short of a few, any given town short of a few on a Sunday morning, the densest area is going to be probably a mega church, um, an evangelical mega church. And, you know, there's probably some counties like in Louisiana, some parishes or whatever, where it's like, yeah, maybe there's they do the Catholic Church is still kind of like the most dense, 
there's nowhere in America where the Orthodox church is the most dense. Um, but like, so what are we to make of that? I guess uh, to continue the thought. And it's like, there's a part of me that wants to say, well, that's obviously wrong because it's the herd. And so that's what I was trying to say. Like what you were saying was like, just because there's like a lot of people going somewhere, we shouldn't necessarily trust that they're all going there for the right reasons. Like a lot of people go to Taylor Swift concerts. A lot of people go to, uh, you know, the Super Bowl, or to, you know, a lot of people go to a lot of places. Uh, that's not necessarily a sign of their holiness or their sanctity, sacredness. Um, but then I would also, I, I kind of would want to want to say the same thing, like in reverse, and, which is that like you know, the, the divine Orthodox, like the divine liturgy of the Orthodox or the high Latin mass of the Catholics, um, is not special because, uh, we're used to, uh, you know, low church settings, like just because they don't sing amazing grace or don't have a kick drum. Uh, we, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, I guess, praise them for their difference. We shouldn't praise them like in, like, as, as opposed to, uh, evangelical me mega churches, because I I do think that like we've got to be able to we've got to be able to do both right. We've got to be able to say like okay, these mega churches are uh care you know they're caring for all of these people's Christian souls, their lives, their sanctifications, their marriages, their families. Um, they are hearing the gospel every week, you know. Uh. They are praising the Lord, you know, like to and, and to the degree that they are is not necessarily, in my opinion, at least based on the type of liturgy that they're being walked through. I'm sure it, it can help or hurt. But the main, you know, the main thing that will either keep or will, will keep a Christian from worshiping or will allow a Christian to enter into worship uh, is, you know, I'm going to say it's the personal relationship with Christ. You know, I'm going to go fall back on the the you know, the, the gospel word that was as good for Paul and Silas. And, um, but then also I just feel, I do feel a little bit maybe to psychoanalyze myself a little bit. Um, like I'm, <laughs> I am sympathetic to high liturgy, high, you know, whatever you mean by that, whether it be the repetition or just the reverence or the kind of narrative or the enacting, like whichever part of the liturgy that you think is, is working, um, or is like, uh, special, you know, I, 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 I'll probably agree with you, but I, I, I also am just kind of like wanting to shine a light on the fact that like, um, I guess it, I, it's a similar thing to the, the, you know, Brendan Graham Dempsey or whatever, where he's like, I don't want to throw away this like, uh, German criticism. Uh, you know, not German. What I mean, I guess it does originally come from German, yeah. but it's I mean, it is, higher, yeah. yeah, higher, higher criticism. Historical. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, he's wanting to to not throw that baby out with the bathwater, or or look for the babies in the bathwater there. And that's, I think that that's kind of a similar gut instinct that I have. Even though, if you caught me like five years ago, I might have been like, burn all the mega churches to the ground. They're, you know, they're. Uh, <laughs> trying to think of something martin well, luther I think would say about the catholic church <laughs> yeah probably something with expletives yeah, but like uh, yeah i think it's cool though the part that you said if you would ask me five years ago i would have been like you know totally pissed and bitter um i think that's a good sign i mean i think that's a sign of healing you know like um yeah. and and so um but I guess the piece, maybe the one piece, the piece that I that I think I'm wrestling with, and and that's part of what you hear coming out of here is just Christian wrestling, like because I'm I'm not part of a mainline church, I'm not part of a Catholic church. Um, I you know have connections to it, deep connections, and walked further into that with like at least the practical applications of something like read and response confessions and creeds and and these things we started using every week uh when i was on staff and now in this community but i didn't do anything for like six years so um but the but the piece that i think i am deeply wrestling with comes back to like this tell us again like i think one being and to your point is uh reach and i would even say
versus something like uh, I'm probably not going to say the right word and you can probably tear it apart something like I'm waiting <laughs> I know, I'm nervous something like no, no worries. coming because this does because I think this coming near to Jesus uh and I think it's and I and I'm talking about it psychologically. I'm not even talking about what I think is happens with a sacrament, what I think happens with liturgy or or rock and roll. It right. theologically, I'm not actually I'm actually thinking about what it does psychologically. And um, you know, people can go to can make the choices to on why they may or may not want to attend churches that are high church sacramental versus low church not just having spent most of my you know all my life or most of my life outside of it per, per, being a practitioner of it um and and i think that there can be there can be corruptions everywhere that's obvious so i don't want to i want to caveat that as well it's not like oh well the you know oh look at you know mark driscoll and perry noble or or look at Christian Baxter, but then look yeah. at, uh, you know, the Catholic church, there's never been any, you right. know, there's the Orthodox church has no, uh, <laughs> uh scandals in the United yeah. States. So it's like, ah, oh, I found <laughs> something that has no scandal. So it's like, yeah, I say that. They're probably, <laughs> yeah, exactly. so, I, I just think as an orienting principle and what it means to come together, there's certain things that happen psychologically that I don't think happen in a form that don't intentionally happen in a form of as i crassly put ted talking at concert right so yeah so that is that's kind of the rub and i think it's psychological and so regardless of what is really happening theologically i don't know but i sure. think that's kind of where I'm, I'm coming from and i think psychologically sacraments like a sacramental theology is different because when you talked about like they're hearing the gospel like that's um that's not something that they that you you touch it's something it's just a, they're hearing the idea and the message which maybe that's maybe that's all it is maybe yeah, that, i could try to go, i could try to go exactly. super nerdy on you and say like yes but they they were in the room you know or or even spiritually like you know but but that i i i understand what you're saying uh, like 100% that like um you know, and I, I don't want to critique, you know, I, I don't want to play the role of like filthy Protestant who thinks it's all just a bunch of lowly symbols, you know, and that's kind of, that's kind of it. You but can. Let me, yeah. I, I mean, I would have, a I would have a blast, you know, try, doing that. But, uh, but no, I, I kind of, I, I think I'm putting something together and let me tell me if you're hearing me right, because I think that there's some, it has to do with the fact that, okay, the, the low church is very good at putting the responsibility on to the individual and even high church i guess maybe that's not even a low church high church thing but like i, don't, I i'm with you on that yeah so so most most people in a high church say that like what they don't like about the low church is that it you know that it it makes it all about the individual's kind of connection or whatever everybody can do what they want to do kind of a thing and so like but that's very different even from the responsibility of someone like you who's had to lead worship and so when you're lead, when you're kind of tasked with the kind of uh, liturgical shepherd, you know, like you're the pastor in charge of what we do, the work of the people, like what we do every week. Um, that's when I think that uh, the liturgy often gets treated as like, oh, thank goodness, you know, they figured all of this stuff out before. Like we don't have to reinvent the wheel, you know, that we we don't have to come up with new rituals. Um, so there's, there's that aspect of it. Um, but then I also think that like there's, but to, so for, to me, that's, but that's very different because that's almost like once, once a Protestant worship mem minister says like, okay, we're going to start doing communion every week and we're going to take it more seriously. You know, we're not going to do the plastic, you know, the the travel uh, communion sets, you know, the COVID uh, cups. 
yeah and to go cups yeah yeah exactly covid cups oh gosh um and 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 even stuff like um you know ordering the worship so that you have the kind of i you know i can't remember all the details in the way that it's it's put but like you know you start with kind of the the call to worship so you know one of those great big hymns of you know how great is our god or uh you know if it's a calvinist it's like a mighty fortress is our god that kind of you're supposed to be awestruck by the glory of god uh and then you know then you have the next portion and then all of this kind of mimics the bible right so i'm just going to ex explain the kind of protestant liturgy that we talked about at my church which was basically you start with this glory of god um he's so big we so small um the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom that's how the service starts and then the next the the next kind of flow of the service is at some point a, a, a confession of sin and admission of guilt um and then some sort of absolution or depending on the topic of the sermon and we we did exegetical so it was just through the you know the pastor or the elders would pick a book and that's what the teaching pastors would go through in the in the months the next few months or whatever um and so depending on what the sermon was about basically either you put the the confession song before or you put it after um but then you know it's the three four songs sit down ted talk like you said it's a long ted talk and uh you know we had a we had a really <laughs> good pastor so that like you know it was good you know, it com very compelling just like people sit through jordan peterson like this guy was maybe not as smart as peterson but equally as like compelling um a speaker and yeah. And then you do the, you know, the three songs and like as a technique, as a techne, I saw that work nine out of 10 times, you know, it worked on me and I knew what we were doing and I still like it, I felt it, you know? And so I think that that there's an element of that that's true of the liturgy is like, it's one of those, it's like a joke that you can know the punchline to, but it'll still make you laugh every time. It's almost like tickling yourself. Like there is an element of that where it's just the repetition of doing it every week and knowing what to expect, not like in terms of knowing what song's gonna be next, or or even like knowing, like if you you can look up what the Bible verse is gonna be about, but like, so, so, so if that liturgy is happening, I'm kind of like, what else are we talking about? Because at that point it just becomes, okay, are we, how serious are we taking communion is kind of the next thing. And like, um, are we using, uh, uh, what are they called? The um, electionary are we using electionary so are we going to be preaching out of the same kind of passages um is call and response like because this is where i think the like the muddy the waters get muddied on like what do you consider as liturgical versus not liturgical and oftentimes i think that like it used to be you could you could kind of split high church and low church because low church sang a cer certain hymns and maybe had a piano instead of an organ but now it's like after vatican ii the catholics are, are copying the protestants and uh <laughs> and like i so I, I i guess that like oftentimes my kind of i get bugged with it uh the whole kind of like high church low church thing because from a from just like a church member's perspective it's probably more important that we kind of do the same things every week than it is you know per, like necessarily what we do now I know I'm going to get heat for that because it's like yes it's important what we do. But I'm talking about like if you want to have the arguments of what should we do, most people aren't going to have the argument. They're just going to go to the church that they like the best and whatever they do they're going to do. And I think even further in this day and age, like my parents best like my parents eat uh dinner with their next door neighbors once a week and they are uh they're more on the the elevation side of the so they're more charismatic they come from like a, a word of faith background um so my they don't agree my parents don't agree with them on hardly well you'd think hardly anything but like it's not my parents still think that they're christians you know and so like i i do get the sense of like yeah i i i i, I hear the high church stands and i know that it's so beautiful and that like aesthetically we can't even touch it but like i also i just <laughs> want to be the voice in the wilderness crying out for the the mega church uh, rock band services and just say that like uh you know in heaven maybe there'll be the divine liturgy you know section that you can do that for as many thousands of hundreds of thousands of years that you want to but i'm sure there's also going to be 
a, a stage somewhere in those pearly gates that's playing ocean you know <laughs> like <laughs> Uh, Not to let me see. They I'll steal all our music. They steal all our music. They just the Catholics. They take our songs. They they change the words slightly, and then they say, "Wow, look what we can sing now! This sing a joyful, so, make a joyful noise into the law and unto the Lord. We have we are singing a new song unto Him." And meanwhile, they're just trashing the low church evangelicals who have written all of these beautiful new hymns for them. I don't know. I, I I got a little carried away there, a little a little ranty. So forgive me. I like it. I like it. I think so. What I would say about I want to ask when you're talking about confession and when you're talking about like, are those implicit in the songs, not explicit as in like in the in that specific context? Mm, that's a good question. Yeah, so that was something so, that was was made explicit. Uh, not every week, you know, but, um, but yeah, it was from time to time, you know, that was that was definitely because I feel like you're in a very similar place as as where my boss was, kind of year or two before uh, everything for me at least went away. But like, yeah, so like that's the other side, which was like I remember having these conversations and. Uh, kind of just going back and forth of like exactly what, but I think you're making the perfect point is like, okay, how much of this is explicit versus implicit? And to what and degree does the leader owe the response, like owe that responsibility to kind of explain the liturgy every week? Yeah. Even if it's not explained to a degree, like, well, this is our confession of faith, or this is our confessing in a song that we are a sinner, something. I think that from my perspective, it is more healthy to be explicit to as for the people. And and what and what a actually we are going now to confess sin together. We are going to now to confess our faith together. It, so on that litur on the liturgical side. And so So you I consider think that, there's that an kind of that kind of explicitness being on the liturgical side. I would say it's more historic. I mean, it's it mainline. I mean, from like that, that's historical, like not just, and I would, and I would differentiate between the Baptist church versus and, and everything that you would maybe consider. You may not have been officially in the cooperative program. Maybe you were, but like, if, if you're, if you, Danny if Armstrong, you Body moon, come on, man. Amen, brother. <laughs> If you believe in, in in credo baptism, and then you're basically Baptist, like that's just I mean, then it's in the name. Yeah. And, but even if you're not calling yourself a Baptist church or you're independent or something, you'd be like, oh no no we're not Baptist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, a uh, that so that so that the one side of it is the explicit nature of to a degree, you know. You you hit on it too with the individualism, that the bass is nice and thick, you know the 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 vocals like I mean she sounds amazing. You don't even have to sing. To and then so who knows? It's a bunch of individuals in a room having experiences. When you cut the music, and then three. A hundred, three hundred, five hundred, a thousand people say, uh, "God, I am a sinner. Uh, forgive me for the things I've I've done and the things that I've left undone." And you hear five hundred people say that. Yep. It, like in a like psychologically, oh, oh, you know, you, and and then, but it's kind of you know, it's against the that kind of self consciousness is against the seeker movement, which is also implicit in mo the mega church movement yeah so oh, man, and, that's, and oh, that's good and then after that within when i hit on the baptist thing is the other the other orienting piece which is is like if the really the grace in my life that i receive from the from the church we can say it's not sacramental but we psychologically treat it like one which is then going to be the preaching of the word and that's way downstream from calvin which so, but um, then that then that does a couple of things. I mean, the priest in the high church also has the power in the administration of the Eucharist, 
but it's also the same thing psychologically is being done with the preaching of the word in non-high church or even in Pro- in Protestant church. So, but there's still some churches still Protestants still have a high view of, of sacramental theology. The thing that the, then the, the, so the two things, the, the explicit versus implicit liturgy, and then also psychologically, you actually saying the weird stuff. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ is only son, born of a virgin, resurrected from the grave. The Holy Spirit's real. We're part of a universal church. If you say that a couple of times a year, you say that a couple of times or once, you know, when people are getting baptized or whatever. Yep. Like, like we're not trying to pretend that, that and this is also part of the secret thing, we're not trying to pretend that we're not weird. Right. So, right. So there's that. And, ver- yeah, and, so- then, and then the, just the sacramental thing takes it to something about an issue that I'm kind of starting to like trip over is if it's, well, I just am calling it light Gnosticism, even though I wouldn't say that about my brothers and sisters individually or whatever, but like that, that, that something binding you to, to the world, to this creation, not the world, to creation, connecting you to God is another psychological, I mean, these things are psychotechnologies or whatever, like I think is actually really, can be really helpful, you know, mm-hmm. um, and, and even the, then there's also the embodied nature of worship and where, you know, physically bowing, I think is something, and again, these are the weird non-secret things, and that's kind of what I'm uh, responding right. to, and you can have people bowing at an altar, There, you know, there's certain parts of that are expected in different contexts, but anyways yeah oh man so so much good stuff so like i think one thing my brain keeps wanting to bring forward is the fact that like if this stuff worked for their goals mega churches would do them is is kind of one thing and so like um and, and I, I also need to disambiguate a few things too is like okay the the low church baptist church that i grew up in slightly different very different theologically than the mega church that was more reformed uh more like dallas theological seminary versus Mm. where where i am now which is a heretic in a confessional booth uh you know like i'm so i just want to disambiguate those things i don't i can't speak with any authority on any of this stuff right like i I can't even speak as (laughs) yeah i i mean i can't even speak as someone who goes to church you know i'm speaking as someone who's trying to defend something i can't even bring myself to be a part of so it's kind of like <laughs> I think we're both doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's just more fun for me to to make fun of the Catholics because I feel like uh, they deserve it. You know, they 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 earned they earned it. No, and Neil's Neil's Catholic, so I feel like I can make fun of Neil at least. Um, very good, dear friend. Shouts out to Neil, uh, Neil Daedalus. That's right. Um, good dude, real good dude. Um, but. Okay, so so that's one thing, and but so yeah, the, the mega churches, if if this stuff worked, quote unquote, they would do it. But then, so put that aside. Oftentimes, at least for the church I went to, we would do those things. You know, we would explicitly say, um, and and sometimes it would be like, we're gonna repeat this stuff. You know, you're the crowds or the audience or whatever. I can't remember the words we use. The the body. That's what we would have used. The bodies. Like, uh, so I'll read what's in yellow and then the body will read what's in white, you know, and it'll be the same kind of, um, forgive us for the things done and left undone. And, and, you know, we would steal from usually Presbyterians or Lutherans or whoever, um, as long as they were more conservative than us, we felt like we were safe. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, it, and so, so there was that aspect and then, but then there's also just the kind of like, yeah, like how it is kind of about market forces in a way, but but there's this weird thing that'll happen where you'll try like if you're the if you're the worship leader or whatever, you'll you'll try something new, quote unquote new. You know, it's just new to the the church's liturgy, which they do every week. So it's a big change to change something up. Like now we're going to bow. You know, everyone. I'm going to ask everyone to get on their knees, or uh, you know, everyone come. We're going to receive communion at the front of the church instead of passing it out. Like all of these things especially when there's 750 people in a room 
become these like massive, massive hiccups. And so one of the like, uh, but, but our kind of theory as a church was that a lot of times those hiccups are what the spirit actually uses. And so when I was kind of in charge of production, I, we ne- for one, we never had a completely smooth, you know, Sunday where nothing went wrong and everything worked perfectly. Like that's just not going to happen period. But like, even if we had I, I, the, the Sundays where it was like went really easy and everything was like fine, there was always this weird the staff always felt kind of weird like that that didn't really feel like a real sunday you know because we didn't have so and so fall in the aisle you know no the the homeless people that normally come up and beg you know they were nowhere to be found today like all so i guess what i'm trying to say is like i would want to focus it more on the personal and the relational and the even in even the individual but not because of um well, well, I guess it's this is why because I've also been to a lot of Catholic services. Like I, part of my family is Catholic now as well, um, but I grew up in Savannah, Georgia, and it's just you know it's got a huge Catholic population. Uh, big St. Patty's Day parade every year, so it's kind of like I grew up. I kind of grew up around a lot of Catholics, and I never felt like the Catholic Mass was all that great. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all the you know my Catholic friends, even the ones who have had mystical experiences in the Mass, like. I get, I get that, I get that side of it. If I had had a mystical experience, I could see how my whole perspective on the thing would have changed. Um, but it would, it just, I did not feel the pathos. We'll say, you know, I didn't feel the emotions. I felt a bunch of people literally going through the motions. Um, and I now know that, like, you know, there's probably some saints in there who, like, they're doing some Father Lawrence practicing the presence of God, and they're actually communing. And and so all of the theological issues of like transubstantiation um i feel like that's a, a very like if you're trying to bring that to your you know protestant church protestant house church like maybe maybe a house church is a good place to experiment with it and be like all right guys let's pretend like this is not pretend obviously sorry forgive me uh but like let's treat this as the uh you know let's treat this as jesus's body let's treat this moment like we are coming into contact with the lord physically like i i I don't see anything wrong with that and and that was always one of my that's that was just not theological and but yeah i mean if you had some other things you wanted to say well i guess just in in summary and i'm sorry i'm not as clear-headed tonight uh too much i had too much to do in my day job today (laughs) but uh uh Yes, I'm a little scatterbrained, so forgive me for that. But um, I guess the the thing that I wanted to kind of say in conclusion was was yeah something about oh that's right that's right is that I remember my kind of big conclusion right after everything went bad with the mega church for me once again it was mostly me it's a completely different staff now so there was obviously some lots of internal stuff that was going on but um, beyond me but um, I remember thinking at the time that if you had taken, if you had split the church, so what, so what, there was like close to probably, let's just say a, it was, it was close to 15 or, but let's just say like, whatever, 15, if it was 15, when I left, that's a little, that's a little over, but just to make it the math easier, if you had split that up into three 500 person churches, each one of those churches would have been a more healthy church than the, than the mega one. And if you had done that again, it were completely randomly also, each one of those churches most likely would have been more healthy than the massive mega church. Um, and so like, from my perspective, I think that a lot, oftentimes people want to blame the problems with the mega church on the evangelical side of things or the theology behind why they might want to do low church or like a seeker movement. Like you might disagree you know, with the seeker movement. And, you know, I'd probably tend to agree uh, with most of your critiques on the seeker movement. But to me, it was like such a simple, more simple problem than that, which is uh, if the church is 1400 people every Sunday, that's not a church. Like, I don't know what that is. It's a great time. It's awesome to hear people, you know, it's awesome to hear that many people like sing at the top of their lungs, amazing grace. But uh you know if you don't have actual community if you don't have and i sorry i did that in quotes because that was part of the church's name uh, i'm not going to dox mm. the church but um 
but yeah, so like if you don't have real community, if you're not in a community group, if you're not in a small group, if you don't meet up with people uh, weekly and a, and a gathering, you know, um, then it really doesn't matter what happens on Sunday morning. Like, I, I guess that's that's kind of as simple as I, as I could put it. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a so I, the, the part about breaking it apart to, that would make more health is something that I think is it's kind of one of those things where you're defending this the inten- the intention that you know and that I know that in some ways is honest like this desire to reach or the fact that when you get 1500 people quote unquote tithing or something that you can do actually do some really interesting things like I mean you can help some widows and you can you know Perry Noble can give everybody a, a, a car on Mother's Day you know like things yeah. You know, we, that, that was the coolest thing we ever did. The coolest thing we ever did was we got a chapter. Of, I think it was like Mark. We totally funded the translation of Mark into a language that it had never been translated into. Before. Yeah. And, and we and paid for like three translators for like a, a year, you know? Yeah. And, and so, and that's Tim Keller on Tim Keller's growth. Uh, did y'all read his growth thing, his church growth stuff? I did. I don't think we ever did as a staff, but we all kind of did individually. Yeah. Yeah, his, that was his end. That was actually kind of his end point. And so, however, like, I mean, you could map that onto big institutions like the Catholic Church. You could map that same thing on. So, yep. but, it, but I'm not, you know, that's not really what I, what I wanted to, to focus on. I wanted to focus on the part where if the liturgy and if the sacraments worked, then, uh, then uh, they would have done them. But I don't know. I mean, they couldn't theologically. So well, and they already yeah. they do work, you know, like they work because they for even even in the evangelical mindset, they work because the Catholics keep doing them, you know. And oh, I see. OK, like I, I just meant that they work well, in terms I would, of I would, like I almost would, I would I would almost argue that like that, that that I don't. <sighs> uh, you, you almost don't want them to work in that way because you want it to be like for different reasons. Is that right? You're what you're saying. Like I don't you know want them to work. to work. No, I, I, oh. what I, I, what I'm thinking is that I would rather there be 10 truthful people, men, families, that helped create another truthful family. honest or something. And what I mean by that is Christian, something, you know, like in a very, like kind of a, maybe an elitist way, not, not meaning to, but like, okay. And I'm not saying that 1500 people at your church weren't, I, I'm not going to make that judgment. I will. They're all burning baby. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not going to make, and I, and, and, cause it's not mine. And I don't believe that on a certain, in a certain way. But what I'm saying is, that those those institute like that that doesn't build trust with people on it like you're saying the trust it actually would get better if it built you came into 500 person churches and then became 250 person churches or something like that that actually would build and i'm so i'm more concerned or care more about and that i that so now do i believe that liturgy and and sacraments will help build trust i think i don't know I'm not. I don't know if I can make that thing either. But I think right. there's there's some things there where I think psychologically that they do some things di- differently, and that maybe the Catholic, you know, the Catholic Church that's tr- that's now look, looking at the Protestant hot girl fifty years too late or something like. Then that that if if the Protestants are doing it right, then they, or it's working. Like, well, maybe the whole project the whole project i have maybe that's kind of what i'm like they they don't even have enough confidence of of themselves like because because uh ratzinger let the that let um latin mass come back and francis actually said only only a few people can do this thing and like during and so and and i robert baron talks about like he thinks well i don't know if he i don't know maybe he doesn't but but that was even Peterson was making this point about the the damn Catholics don't they don't believe in their own thing enough, 
So mm -hmm. that I guess that's kind of really what I'm not I don't I'm not comparing it to the Catholic Church in my town or something. I don't know. Um, but that like um I guess it's this uh platonic ideal or something, maybe, but uh right. <laughs> Well, but, yeah, maybe maybe another way to put it is like there's there's always pro you know there's no solutions only trade offs kind of a thing, where like yeah. even, but that but that rubs against like I think one thing you share that uh, especially given your family situation uh, is like I want more ecumenicism, uh, despite my you know sometimes audacious trolls in the comments about high church and low church, but like. Uh, my preference would be a scenario in which I could go to mass, you know, on every day I could go to Vespers, uh, you know, I could hear the divine liturgy maybe a couple times a month. I could go to the big evangelical concert, uh, you know, with the kick drum, I could feel in my chest, like, uh, and not just because I want it to be kind of like a, uh, you know, I don't want to be stuck at the golden corral of worship and just kind of picking whatever <laughs> makes me feel whatever's tasty you know and um but then i also do think that like there's value in all of those things and like but but what to me when we talk about what church is you know i'm i'm still stuck at vbs like i'm stuck at here's the church here's the steeple open all the doors where's all the people you know the church is the people so an empty church building or um well, I don't know. I'm tempted to say things a little too extreme, maybe hyperbole, but like, yeah, because I, I just got the image of like um, just a bunch of monks like doing mass for no parishioners, you know, like a, a completely empty giant cathedral. And you just see like these liberal, <laughs> these liberal Vatican II popes singing uh, Kumbaya, uh, <laughs> you know, and and it's just like, come on, guys, like uh, that ain't it. But like, but there's also something, you know, valuable to that. There's also something like, what else are monks, like, what else are priests supposed to do? Like, their they're, priests are meant to give the liturgy. And so, like, I think that, you know, I, I, I would prefer a more extreme view, I guess, of the priest of, of all believers. I wish sometimes that my conscience would let me give myself uh, communion or the Eucharist, which, but I don't, you know, unfortunately, I don't believe that, so... Uh, <laughs> I've been communionless, but, but I also not. And, you know, if you take both, uh, both ways of the word, like I, I have had communion, I have had, um, you know, I've tasted that the Lord was good. So it's kind of like, yeah, I guess it's a very strange situation and question because from where we are, we're already kind of like post Protestant and we're trying to figure out like, okay, do we. I, I kind of feel the tension that that you are wrestling with a lot and that I'm often thinking about is like, okay, how much and, and this is the meta modern question, right? Like this is how much how much of the past do we bring forward? Because we can't bring all of it forward. But like how much of it do we preserve? How much do like and and we're con like we are judging the past by what we choose to bring forward, you know? And we will be judged by the future for those same things kind of a thing. So like, um, yeah, once again, caveat that I'm a complete heretic outside of communion. And so it kind of is silly for me to even give prognostications on this. But it, the like, what is but the nature of worship? We can because you and I are both fired and we don't represent <laughs> it. Like, That's I'm right. I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> And, and my identity is not so wrapped up in it that if it went away tomorrow that I, I mean, I would have some sadness, but like, but that that's actually, maybe we're having a conversation that in public that people oh, I forgot. Like, I mean, we're, I, in, we're recording <laughs> it, that like, you know, I hung out with a guy today who I've known since I was probably fifth or sixth grade and he's a associate kind of pastor guy at the, one of the big churches in town. And, uh, and I told him about this podcast and he's like, yeah, you can probably say things that I would probably get fired for. And yep. I think that that's actually important. And I think that's part of this whole downstream from Paul. Like you have people that were seriously, that's seriously care. Like, dude, I, I, I know you do. I know that Luke does. Like, I know that Sam does. Nobody 
is on staff except for Paul <laughs> like that can that but these people seriously care yeah, I, and and so like uh but we can because we can actually have conversations that people can't have out in public so or it's almost even, our... or even with their pastor sometimes I got an email this week says hey Arkansas Rando interested in a conversation wow because he's thinking he might want to be Greek Orthodox. and But you sound like you've... I go to this church called New Life, which, shout out New Life, I love you guys. But, like, he's like, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you know, and he sa- it sounds like you might be able to have somebody I have a conversation with about that. And, like, so... <laughs> so, that, so regardless of even where we land on, you know, on our discussion of of high low like it's almost the fact that it that the discussion that the the conversation is happening and i also think that i mean i mentioned this in the the intro but like i mean because a lot of the space is downstream up for two reasons downstream from peterson downstream from peugeot uh peterson a lot of people did go to just go to these big old high churches when he said when they felt compelled to go back to church so there's that and then the orthodoxy thing from peugeot there's so there is this in this space, there's like a, maybe a, um, you know, uh, and, and, and the interesting thing about it is a lot of these people are elites. A lot of these people were smart people. They weren't. And so they have like a certain, you know, I'm, you know, I, I can, I can, I know I'm right. I'm an elite yeah. type thing. And, and then, you know, God bless Jordan Hall ended up going to some Baptist house church that COVID Baptist house church or something. Presby, Presby, Baptist, who knows what it really, I haven't looked it up, yeah. but like, I mean, I'm, I'm afraid, to I'm afraid to go. Uh, <laughs> he invited me to like get coffee and check it out. Uh-huh. But I, uh, I've completely chickened and chickened out and not called him. Cause I'm, I'm equally afraid of really, really, really liking it and just being like, ah, oh, man, now I've, have to commit to these people <laughs> you know oh. but then i'm all but then i'm also afraid that i'm gonna hate it you know i'm gonna have to tell this man that i you know really respect and look up to that you know went out this of his way lame, to, Jordan. <laughs> yeah to just be like oh boy <laughs> and that's i mean that's part of the that's part of the thing too is even even that i think they're probably i have no idea but they're probably having some of these same conversations and i think tons oh, yeah. of people are um but it's uh well it's not it, one that that's go ahead. the the protestant always has the option to like you know use the high church stuff kind of a thing like when if you're in if you're like father eric and you're just reading canon law you're just doing you're just running mass you know you're not like uh there is no creative creativity there is no problem to solve you know mm-hmm. it's literally you do what's in the lectionary you do what's been passed down the work that you do is to make sure that your heart is pure and that you're not, you know, that you're, I mean, I, I don't know this from the inside, obviously I only know this from the outside, but like, but it also like, that's what I mean. Like, it seems like a very Protestant problem to be like, maybe we do need to, you know, kind of look back and because for when you're, when you're, when, yeah, when you're high church, like it's not, there's no question. Like you just pick out the hymns, but even if all you're doing is picking out the hymns, like all the hymns have already been, you know, whittled down or whatever. But, Sorry, I feel like that was a completely different. Um, but yeah, they. I, I do think that they're probably talking about this stuff. You know, like I think most churches are probably talking about this stuff because it's just kind of like, you know, nobody wants to go to church and worship in a way that isn't the best way to worship. <laughs> well, <know? laughs> yeah, and I guess that's probably probably part of my issue because, like, I cared, mm-hmm. and you know, and I still do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And I mean, and I, it sounds like you did, you do, and you still do. But to the point, okay, this is something you mentioned, like trying to do a synthesis or like the, the ecumenical idea. And like, I mean, I don't, I don't have it figured out, but I kind of, I think the way that I approach it, the way that I'm personally approaching it is something like, and I, I think I even said this with Lance, so you may have heard me say it, but like, you know, 
dirt poor Robins doing these these rock opera songs that are talking about deep ideas, and then like like let's 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 honor rock and roll, and maybe like on Sunday morning that's not where rock and roll is necessarily or something. But dude, I'm telling you, I I'm playing acoustic guitar on Sundays. Like, but so I this isn't a this is me thinking out loud about this. This isn't Christian is living this thing, but I'm trying to understand something that I trying to, you know, consider for my life, I guess. But that, yeah. that, 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 that does like say, which again, that's not going to happen like all over the world and all over the United States. Oh, well, we'll have the mega church open on Friday night and then we'll have the, you know, whatever, like everyone yeah. show up for, eucharist on sunday morning and with a different mega church yeah mega church friday night then we'll all go to uh you know we'll we'll practice a jew a jewish sabbath you know we'll go to shabbat temple uh we'll walk there and then you know sundays then we'll do you know probably i, I would say probably latin mass in the morning sunrise latin mass and then uh divine liturgy at at, at sunset i think that'd probably be the you know <laughs> the yeah but I, there's something there like there's something really that's actually really beautiful though like I mean, I don't know. I did that. I don't. I don't think that that's just gonna like happen overnight or anything, or even that that's even right. I don't know. But but that that brings it into some kind of hierarchy to where that these things are are have value, um, and but that they allow you to kind of like, you know, like do this thing, you know. Um, to ascend and descend and to go to the temple and go out to the desert. Like, and, and the other piece of that what I'll throw in there is like, even like getting on board with like personally. And this is what I would say, even to your idea about the personal nature versus some kind of corporate nature is like just personally getting involved in the church calendar more deeply or per personally for one, I think it's countercultural and two, I, I do think that like, if you practice things like Lent and Advent, in your house for yourself for your family like i think that that helps fight other problems that we would talk about in our culture related to something like consumerism which again we hit on early on that we didn't use that word about the mega church thing but i think you know that's a conversation too yep so yep there's some thoughts. absolutely uh -huh. wow yeah like i i just think that the mega church is such a good symbol for our time. Like in a, in a, in a, in a lot of like what you're saying with the consumerism, um, with the way that it's like about the individual, but also you kind of lose your individuality because you just kind of become a part of the like faceless, nameless, dark void of the, you know, what used to be a Costco or whatever. Um, uh, and like, uh, but then I also think that, uh, because because they're uh, kind of a a symbol of the time or whatever, I think we should be very careful. Like Chesterton's fence kind of still applies. You know what I mean? Like, uh, once again, there's a reason they're called mega churches. So, like, if you change if you change the mega church, you're actually changing more people's lives, at least in America, than you are. You know, uh, changing if you if you if you were to change the divine liturgy. Uh, there would be a very small amount of upset people in America. Uh, you know, I've crossed the world, different numbers or whatever. But like, yeah, so I, it to me, it very much is the, it's got to always be about the personal. And like, I don't know, would, do you think you'd miss electric guitar in your worship services? I, I don't think say, I would. I don't think it's like a necessity. I would say, here's what I would say is, I think that, so say the, the Catholics are looking at Protestantism, but they don't really have the infrastructure or like they may, I mean, I know Neil plays in like a, a, a worship band at his church too, but like, uh, um, and I'll make this argument all day long for what Hillsong Passion, even Elevation, like what, they're doing with art <laughs> and that actually i would say like trying to marry that to a degree is actually more of a talk to you know it's like well what did they give us that's something man 
Uh, they they gave us. I mean, oh, come to the I mean, altar is a banger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they've just you given know. us banger after banger after banger. <laughs> so what if you were singing that for Eucharist? You know, yeah. It, it, and I don't even know how that completely fits because they're because but um and not just oh we played the song because that's a whole nother that's what I was hitting on in my our conversation last night. It's like oh let's play oh come to the altar okay yeah let's use that in in our Catholic church. And it's like you know for all your talk of transcendence and and this and architecture and high and mighty that sounded like absolute dog shit. <laughs> So yeah, well, so some of the that, paintings aren't that good either. But don't get me started on that. I uh, last time I was in a Catholic church, my wife was like smacking me the whole time because I was just like, "Can you believe that? Can you believe that they allow that up there?" But yeah, that's uh, well, it's dangerous to to you know start critiquing uh, the aesthetics of a church. Like that's just uh, you know. But, the, but at the same time, I mean, it's important. It's like so important. Well, and even like I mean, what what is the the whole thing with like you know creating a higher aesthetic in the mega church is like i mean it's the most gifted artists that i have been in contact with were all attracted to that aesthetic 10 15 years ago for the right reason because they cared and it's not just and and the artist and i would also bring this in the artist the contemporary artist, you went to art school, so you probably can speak better to this than me. Uh, Cause I don't consider myself really like an artist. Um, but that, the, that the, even finding the place for the artist. And I think that in the mega church for me, I, that it's, that it was a kind of, it was, it was put too, put too high on the hierarchy, but that, that but that the fact that they did, give the place for the artist to go and graphic design and play your like no one's learning organ people are learning electric guitar and right. and they are and they are becoming like like okay so case in point i'm still a worship leader and this kid walks in early 20s and he decides to go to our church instead of the actually a little bit bigger church and i was like why did you and and i was and then he starts talking to me he's like yeah, I, I like Lincoln Brewster. And I was like, oh, say more. <laughs> and for those that don't know, Lincoln Brewster can play like, uh, you know, like Queen and like he can, he can do, he's a Christian contemporary dude that can do real electric guitar work. And, and, I, and then he goes, yeah, you know that song Miraculum? He's like, he's like, I did a YouTube tutorial on that. And I was like, <laughs> excuse me? Now, I don't think that I could, get that in every Sunday, but I was like, I think I can find a place for this. Mm -hmm. I think I want to like bring this out. Like, and so we did Miraculum for Christmas and like, but we weren't, I'm, but there would be Sundays. I'd be like, we're not going to do even the, the eight bars of this solo on this song. Like we're, we're going to pull it back. Right. Something right. like that. But like, but, but so to this point about where the art sits on the hierarchy is like the, the creative impulse is to always be creating. And in corporate worship, if you have the creatives at the front driving, that also became an issue that I began to see. It's like, well, keep putting out these bangers, keep putting out these bangers, like, but not enough people are paying attention. And if you're always updating your canon, like, how can you get everyone to sing or something? Not that every church is doing that, but... Mm -hmm. The impulse for the creative is to do that because you've already, by the time that you get that song on stage, you as the worship leader, you've already heard the song 15 times or something. And it's the right. first time that they're hearing a song that Sunday. And then you might not do that song again for two months. And that will be the second time somebody hears that song. And yep. so when you're create when the creative impulse is driving the liturgy that way, I that I also have tension for that. So I'll, I'll yeah, throw so, that back. So you You'll like this. We had a strategy when we would introduce a new song. And I think we only introduced one legitimately original song while I was there. Um, we wrote a lot, but we, you know, we were very hesitant to um we would we would have never just sprung that on the full church. So this was this is how we did it. So first we, 
you know, we wrote it, practiced it. We had kind of like the A team band, the B team band. And then, so, but basically my boss, the worship leader, he, he wrote the lyrics. I think that me and him probably like workshopped the chords over the course of like a day or two, just kind of songwriting like Nashville style with, I think I was on keys and he had a guitar. And so we were just trying to figure out kind of the, the feel of the arrangement basically. And then, you know, we bring it like to one band member at a time, maybe all the band members eventually. And then, you know, we're starting to, it'll, you know, it'll be what we play to warm up at practice. And then we start doing it for the college worship night, which would have been on like Thursday or Friday night or something like that. And then after that, we would have tried it out at the high schoolers because college, they're open for anything quick to learn. High schoolers, a little less open, a little less quick to learn, maybe sometimes a little faster to learn depending on, you know, the song, but like. So we we had the the youth base, and then once we had that, that's when we would try it out on a Sunday, and it would very much be like a. It so this was our whole strategy, and we only got through it all the way once for like one song that I remember. It could, it could have been more, but I only remember the one, and um, and then we did it every song for a month, um, because it went with the you know we wrote it for the specific series on you know the Book of Titus or whatever it was I don't remember, um, and so we did it every single month. And after we had like basically by the end of the month, like it sounded like, you know, everybody knew the song, you know, it was the church was actually singing it. But for the most part, we just did, you know, we just did the hymns and and we would we would do kind of like the Mars Hill kind of, um, you know, King's K right. and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do modern arrangements with electric guitar. And and, and we did a lot of the King's K and like Dustin Kinsaroo kind of um originals too like that was one of the funnest ones we ever did was we would do like defenders by king's kaleidoscope in a worship service but, but even the, like king's is getting out there like like on a type of esotericness that again like that's like what that's kind of what i'm pointing at is like the here's the thing too is the unintended consequences so like back when i first was getting into leading and early 2000s there were only four sources. Yeah. yeah. And so that kind of worked because, because it, David Crowder does how he loves, he picks it up from John Mark and, and then it popularizes across the nation on the radio stations and in the churches. Chris Tomlin puts out an acoustic banger that does the same mm -hmm. thing because he figured out the magic formula and, and then, you know, Hillsong will have Mighty to Save and and maybe one on their next. It's like, okay, that kind of works for creating the, the the Catholicity of modern worship. Yep. But we're kind of spinning that out. And now it's like, well, okay, well, maybe you have to figure it out at your own church actually now. Because, well, we now have the tools to do it. They taught us how. And then you have things like, multi-tracks and planning center where you can teach people the ability to teach people music because of the digital revolution is actually also exponentially increased quality for people that was one of the reasons i got onto multi-tracks early on is because i'm like i'm tired of me telling everyone how to do this just listen to this i'm tired yep. of saying verse four <laughs> during the practices that was why i got onto that stuff because you know yep. <clears throat> but like but the thing but the but that that kind of and it's some of it still happens every now and then, but now your backlog is, you know, huge. And I don't ever want to play that song again. And because mm -hmm. I want to create new, th so I, there's, there's just some, there's something yeah. there. Yeah. I, what you're saying is reminding me that like, there is a weird way in which God is always in control, you know? Cause like you really like oftentimes when I meet people, like you or, or like my old boss who are, who are just like worship leaders like they have a heart not just for like music but also a heart for ministry you know a heart for people a heart to talk and to to be in relationship with people um it's just funny like when we had a really good af after you know after the rocket ship explosion and the numbers had kind of plateaued at about that like just under 14 uh like we had such great musicians you know, and and we didn't even have to put pick the band based on the musician because we had enough great musicians that we only had to pick the ones who were like walking the walk. You know, we didn't have mm -hmm. to even 
picked a guitarist who was like sleeping with his girlfriend you know like <laughs> we, <laughs> that guy got put on the college group like <laughs> i'm just kidding uh, <laughs> that made it sound like it was like a, yeah real that made it sound like it was a real person uh and he played drums he didn't play guitar so it's not real uh no <laughs> uh the real scallion was in the sound booth uh, that was me um but like yeah so there's an element of like making things easier making things quote unquote better more excellent uh but like i really do think that which i i know it's like it's that weird thing it, it's almost like in sports like you don't play to win or it's not about winning it's about having fun but i remember even as a kid being like but it's a lot more fun if we're winning you know and that's kind of what i i'm you know, I don't know how much longer you want to do that, but do oh, this, I, but, uh, we can go for another 30 if we need to. Okay, cool. Perfect. Um, yeah, I was, I was like, I could summarize everything I was trying to say, but I'm not going to, um, <laughs> but there is an element of like, it's not about the quality of music or the, um, quote unquote quality of the liturgy. It's about, you know, your personal relationship with Christ, but boy, is that personal relationship with Christ feel a lot better when you've got, you know, uh, great music and a great sermon and everybody's happy and excited to be there and just can't believe that they that their church is so cool and so you know so life-giving you know yeah. um and so like there's this weird like the the probably the healthier churches uh quote unquote healthier are not necessarily the ones with the best band and the best music um but i'm so so thankful that there are these mega churches out there that can you know, pay these creative people to kind of make these amazing worship songs yeah. that I can, that, I can, I don't even have to be in a church. I can listen to my earbuds and I'm crying and weeping, you know, like <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to turn on my air conditioner real quick. Okay, cool. I need to, I need to use the potty. So can we maybe just take a quick pause? Oh, and he's gone. I don't know if you edit these things. Do you, do you edit these things afterwards? Uh, sometimes. Yeah, okay. I was about it, to say, I, maybe we could take a bathroom break, but you, you had yeah, already left. If, so. you to, if you need to, go for it. Grab your I'm dinner good. or something. Okay. My, my, I'm going to sound a little more trashy on my end, but um, okay. the, that's what I'm saying. Like, that the high, like, it's almost like that the mega church thing with what we're pointing at with creativity and art and artists is it's like they are commissioning this it's like commissioning your local it's your local large cathedral that's commissioning michelangelo or something in a way because they can and there's a value and there's a value for it and i don't i'm like believe me like even in that conversation last night on on friday morning nameless like i was i like i believe like, i like quality <laughs> uh and probably to a fault have have liked it to a fault um and that's why i can't think that's why i was feeling a little misunderstood because at the same time i've been in situations where and even in my own life have had to like put that down but but almost like you i still have i still want to defend this um you know whatever uh aim towards some like platonic ideal about transcendent beauty <laughs> and yeah. and that the, if you get it's the weird thing about that low church is actually in certain aspects of it aren't like, and then, then that's one of them. That's not like they probably have a higher value for excellence or they do for musical excellence than some. Now, then the argument gets on some kind of aesthetic about classical music versus rock and roll. That's actually, right. Oh, now, no, this is what, <laughs> this is what's quality. This is not what's quality. And, and, and the other, the other piece of it, is that I don't like calling your band at your church or band at the church I used to go to the worship ministry. I don't like that. I like music ministry. Yep. 
because that's the goal. That's what we're doing. The worship is, that is more individualized. And, mm -hmm. and I, I, I don't know if this is true, but when people would tell me, man, worship was great today, in the back of my mind, I felt like they were saying the music was really good. They may yep. not have meant that. Maybe I'm projecting that onto them, but I was like, because I would know if it was. <laughs> and, and so some of that, that's what I mean. I feel like these, some the words are important sometimes and, and, and where these things, we, where these things end up stacking and, and some of it is, um, you know, just, it's just, uh, disordered and complicated by the rock and roll revolution. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't yeah. know what's the well, you also get the sense that like, they don't come out of Catholic churches or like the Orthodox divine liturgy being like, man, that was really good today. You know, <laughs> worship was really good today. <laughs> like, Oh yeah. I think I, I've even heard, like, yeah, it was, you know, but that's, but that's kind of because, because, well, you can't say that maybe it wasn't, but maybe that's not the point of Sunday morning. Maybe it is. Maybe, I don't know. Like is, uh, it's maybe the point for some things for the music to be great. Maybe there are other places where maybe we do want some, like how do we get Sunday morning for the heart to be, to be great and have space for where, I don't know. I have no idea what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've delved too deep, dude. We've, we've gotten to past both of our, uh, yeah. We've gotten past both of our abilities to kind of form words, I think, but because uh, so, it's so such a tricky. Uh, I think I I think I hear what you're saying because it's like I and I on, honestly I almost want to just kind of press the easy button, which is the Kierkegaardian button, which is also yeah, which is well yeah maybe he's he's helpful in this conversation in two vectors. Um, the second one, which I'd have to think about for a second. Uh, is his attack on Christendom, which is kind of his last, the last part of his life, he spends attacking the Danish Lutheran Church, which was a state church. So there's, you know, there's high church, you know, and it's also in cahoots with the government. So it's kind of there's some issues there. Oh, Christian nationalism. Um, but uh, so yeah, that's a whole can of worms. But uh, but the the uh, the point that I was about to make was about just individualism and that it's like that's to me why it's a, a trickier question if you're if you're literally tasked if you're a pastor if you're a music pastor god forbid you have the title of worship pastor um like it is your job to try to make it as easy as possible for the spirit to work kind of a thing like what else could you be doing like your whole purpose is to kind of make is to usher in to guide to shepherd the worship of the lord um to it because at least in evangelicalism you're not a priest you know so you're not kind of like meant to be i mean you're a priesthood of all believers but you're not meant to kind of embody the lord when you're up on stage you know that's not what we're most evangelical churches, despite what the mega church pastor, the vibes they give off, that's not what they're trying to do. I'm you know, saying that it's, I'm saying it's going to happen regardless. That I mean, yes, yeah, it's going to happen regardless, and and that's it. But that's that also is true with the music. So like, even if it's if it's on the individual, it's the individual parishioner's responsibility for how well they worship that day, not how good they feel after it, but you know, genuine worth. Did they come with a contrite heart? You know, did they confess their sins? Did they receive the implanted word uh, and receive with thankfulness uh, the implanted word? You know, did they uh, were they a cheerful giver? You know, <laughs> like all of these th these are kind of this is like church 101 kind of stuff. But but on another level, it's like. If you're the if you're playing guitar on stage, you better play your guitar as good as you can. Like there's there you you couldn't practice enough. You couldn't um you you need to be giving your best to the glory of god just like the football players do you know like <laughs> at the end of the uh the game you know they give all glory to god uh 
like I do think that there's a place for that in the church. Like I, I would hope that even at a Catholic mass, like I would hope that the altar boys are like trying to, you know, doing their best uh, to not be distractions to, you know, to carry the, carry the flame as it were. Um, I'm not so familiar with all of the, I've only been to one uh, divine liturgy and I was like a teenager and I completely did not. Uh, I was not anywhere near mature enough to, remember any of it let alone have taken it seriously in the moment i was i was even more of a militant protestant when i was a high schooler um but militant um, protestant yeah yeah well because i went to this like private school that was kind of like ecumenical in nature like presbyterian kind of so we had lots of catholics lots of high church and so i was just kind of like talk here a little bit yeah 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 well to be honest i i just really looked down on the catholics because they all cussed and drank and like <laughs> you know didn't they weren't like i didn't they think that they free, were man. <laughs> yeah i didn't th i didn't think that they were real christians i did not think that they bore fruit you know i was like mm. i'm over here reading my bible and praying every day and these jabronis mm. are just cursing and sleeping with their girlfriends and drinking alcohol on the weekends i'm like what am i doing all this for but uh no, that's not that's not what I felt actually. I I I did I honestly legitimately thought that like most Catholics were just kind of nominal Christians. Uh like Christians in name only. Um I couldn't see how, you know, I <laughs> I didn't like that they prayed to Mary. Uh even the icon stuff, I was like, I don't know about all this all these like paintings inside of the inside of the sanctuary. Um but all that aside like I, I guess I do prefer the individual piece because then it's every individual's responsibility. Respons yeah. But it's also the calling, right? Like it's also, if you've, if you have been called to, if you've been given the, it's like, yeah, if you've been given your talents, the, the, you know, the parable of the talents to whom much is given, much is expected. And so like, that's why I, I pro that's probably part of why I care so much. Cause it's also like, I grew up believing that like, because I could, you know, carry a tune and could sing on pitch that I, that meant that the choir needed me, you know, like mm. even as a, as a middle schooler and my dad being the, uh, you know, the, the music minister, like that was the, and the choir director. So like that was going to be, I was going to be in the choir regardless, but, um, yeah, like there is that, that piece of it to me is like, um, there is a sense in which when you go to a Catholic church, you're almost like, how are people using their gifts here? how like what does it mean to be, have a gift in a catholic church you know like well, what is that i know it goes too far for protestants you know like the only people who are gifted are the ones who can carry a tune kind of a thing um and if you can't like help with worship then you know your, your gifts don't matter or something but like we pretend like I, we pretend like oh you could serve in the worship team or you could bake coffee <laughs> you know that's the same thing same same yeah <laughs> Just use your gifts. Uh, I think, well, again, I think that that the, I guess that I would say something like, I'm just going to say this, like if there was a Catholic church that's, that thought, that financed their own rock band, like commissioned their own rock band, but their own rock band didn't actually perform on Sundays. But that they actually did what the big beggar churches did, and they actually paid these people to sit around and write, and like have incredible, com incredible concerts on a Friday night. Yeah, like or that could be or, like a vocation for a monk, you know, a group of Trappist kind monks. Of, kind of, but you know, like it, that. And then the and then the evangelical impulse was to say come to church on Sunday and Sunday's not actually the same thing as the rock concert, but mm -hmm. it, it's um, and that because like we there's like some kind of approach that's um, aiming at something more sacred and people can say oh I've had very sec uh, sacred moments in in the rock and I I just would I I would say. There's something different between having like a transcendent experience and like something that's sacred. And the way that I would parse that out is, you know, at a at a if a mic falls down, 
on your Sunday morning, even though we're striving for excellence. If a mic fell and punk, and there was some feedback, uh, you know, at the end of the day, like, well, I mean, you know, it's, we're just worshiping. But we're, we're aiming that people still have some kind of transcendent experience where you may not have, like, be, you may not be inspired by the, you know, simple music or the hymn and the chant or something, or whatever. But, like, what happens if the priest drops the Eucharist? That, that is what I'm talking about with something that's sacred. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't well, think I've heard horror stories, but yeah. Yeah, and I think that that like that 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 being able to say we do hold some things sacred and and you can say okay that the preaching of the word is sacred, okay? Like and but I think it's hard to I think it's hard to embody that or like make that be like this is sacred. And I think that that religious something like deeply religious earnestness can find something past like an, a transcendent amazing uh, experience in in something actually simple and um mm. yes so because you're approaching it with a level of sacredness like four on the floor you know sunday morning hey everybody get up like that's not that's not like that's I, Rev, it, not that I think that everything we that's what I mean. There's some kind of like hierarchy here that I keep like that's I'm talking about. That's not to say, oh my gosh, Christian thinks there we need to get rid of all this stuff or something. Um, yeah. Okay. So let me throw this piece in here. Uh, okay. This is this is my dad's perspective. Um, so he he the only music he really likes is like uh, Baroque string quartet kind of stuff like vivaldi four seasons you know mozart bach uh you know mozart that might even be a little too far for my dad's mm. taste uh, a little too modern uh that being said he also you know he's he's not it's that's not all it is like he he likes some modern songs he likes some worship songs he likes songs that make him think of me so he's you know he even likes some christian hip-hop and stuff like that because it makes me makes him think of me uh, cool. like i think he's got he, he's got a couple dc talk songs on his on his uh playlist you know just to make him think of me probably um but so and he 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 went from basically having to pick the hymns choosing the liturgy kind of experimenting with everything we're talking about uh you know uh and even doing stuff like taking the youth group to the cemetery and talking about uh grieving and you know, eating communion at the cemetery, like doing just, you know, just kind of out there stuff like that. Um, so he, he kind of, I feel like he had a great, but, but there was also, my dad is a very serious man. Um, so there wasn't a lot of, um, he, you know, despite what the, the story I, I told with Alan about kind of the crazy stuff that would sometimes happen, like in the church body, my my father was not kind of like a part of that fun. My dad was not dressing up in dresses. He probably partook in some of like he definitely likes liked being in some of the skits or the sketches or whatever. But he's not he's not very um, what's the word? Um, Loose. when you yeah, it's kind of laid back. He's not very laid back. He can be late. the The word I'm looking for is very specific. It's like um. Oh, it's like a type of comedy. They'll say it's like uh, it's like biting, or uh, it's not satire, but it's like um, I can, I'm not gonna think of it. Whatever. I should have taken an alpha brain before this. Uh, but he, so in coming to the new into the mega church, he it has been a spiritual practice for him um, to basically not enjoy any service except for Good Friday when they just have like a cello and a violin and a you know. An acoustic guitar and they're singing the old rugged cross kind of a thing like he can get down with that or christmas service sometimes he'll, he likes the the christmas you know i mean who doesn't like christmas hymns um but Carol, like yeah. so like and i bring him up to say that like okay back to the individual like <laughs> if you find yourself at a protestant church and they don't treat the eucharist 
the way you want them to, or there's not enough explicit communication about what aspects of what we're doing means. And there isn't the kind of earnestness and seriousness with it, like in the, within the body. Um, it's like, what do you do? Well, you, I think that that's a great opportunity to, you know, die to self. Like that's a, that would be the kind of, I think that that would be like the Protestant answer is you kind of like die to yourself. You realize that this is, a, you're, you're kind of feeling uncomfortable for aesthetic reasons. Um, and then, you know, mentor, the problem, the Protestant answer would then also be like mentor someone, you know, outside of the church or not outside of the church, but like, make sure that you're, you know, that you're being in community so that you're, you know, receiving love and you're able to give love, like, so all of those things. But then that's not the world we live in. The world we live in, if you don't like the liturgy, you go to a different church kind of a thing. You know what I mean? And so it's like, um, yeah, yeah. Like every, cause, and then, it, but, but then also, I guess if you're in a house church, then it's like, the community already, I think, is so what it's already about because you're literally in somebody's house. You know, there, there's not going to be more than like 50 of you, I'm guessing. Like, you have the opportunity to make every single thing be liturgy. Like, and what does it take? I guess that's a good question. Like, for your in your opinion, like, what does it take to actually make something liturgical or sacred? Like, maybe maybe not sacred, but sacramental, you know? Uh, I'd say both. I would say both. One, so this house that we're in is not just any house. <laughs> Lord's house. Well, it's it's uh it's very nice. So that actually says something. But in again, like the basement has twelve foot ceilings with controlled lighting. Um, not just like, you know, um, that I brought in some religious imagery, you know, even though we went to this big church, like, and I, I'd be interested in what you like, like I, I spent years being worshiping and, you know, maybe sometimes on the moving on the motion or something like there's something there, but like, and then we, I actually have had a kid, um, Hey, we go light a candle by this thing. Um, just get things started, like acolyte. Um, and because there's a weird thing that it's like, it's kind of fun for kids to light fires. I mean, you know, like, like it's fun for me to light fires. <laughs> exactly. And it's like, we'll like bring you into part of this and Hey, we go blow out the candle 10 year old, like being intentional, like, like those are two very simple things, but it's also okay. What's, and then, um, there is actually there's actually more to doing like call and response. Like it's actually a skill. And I did a lot of call and response, but we actually have another, I have, there's another guy that wants to do this and he does most of the liturgy. And I do me and my wife do like when we're there, three songs in between and the liturgy actually informs the songs. Like you were talking about earlier. I'm not even interested in what the sermon's about in regard to the liturgy. Um, because, are you still there? No, I lost my phone. Hello? Oh, there you are. Hey, hey, you're frozen. Okay, there you are. I'm, wait, am I still frozen? Yeah, you're, you're back alive. Okay. What was the last okay. thing you heard? <laughs> Uh, that you, you do the three songs, but it's, it's not necessarily has to do, it doesn't have to do with the sermon. You said, I think, I think you said, I don't care what's in the sermon. Uh, maybe like, not that yeah, strong, I, but something yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. So like, because I, I want it to be like, this is ex explicitly following like, like a call to worship and the song is explicit, but it's with this. And then like, okay, I'm going to, we're going to do a, a song that's explicitly about the gospel. And then there's um and it's usually him and then we do a confession of sin together and then uh after that i we do a song about god's love mm -hmm. and it's just not hard to find <laughs> right you yeah. know and and uh so 
it's that simple, but at the same time, like I've actually like done a lot more with the liturgy where like during Lent, we did a Lenten lament every week and the whole church is doing it every week. Like, and it's, and it's in a house, but it's not just in like somebody's living room. Generally, it's like that we kind of have created a sacred space within this house. We all have coffee upstairs in this room. It, and it's a grand house. I'm not, you know, so like that's, I think that that's actually, it, it makes a difference. Um, yeah. You're, you're like, living a real, uh, like what it must've been like to be in a uh, Lydia's church. What was that? Is that a, where was Lydia? <laughs> well, yeah, that's the implication, you know, it's like she, so, she had the purple dye or whatever. So uh, she would have yeah. made, yeah, she would have made clothes for royalty with that yeah. purple dye. So she probably, you know. Ka-ching. Yeah. So, uh, and, but I, I care, I actually care about that. It's like, oh, this, we say these things in, in, in good evangelical Protestants, like, oh, th- again, this was kind of the, the conversation. It doesn't matter as long as your heart, it doesn't matter as long as, sorry. And it's like, well, I, I think that if it does, I think it psychologically matters. I just think it, like, like it psychologically matters. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Oh, I understand you so much more now. Okay. Yes. Yes. I get, I get you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. Sorry. Keep going. Well, so, and then like, we're, when you say these things out loud together, it psychologically matters that when the music's not playing, when the music is, and here's a song and, and, um, and so we use notes off of iPhone. It's one scroll. And nice. so we have a projector on the wall, and I'm actually looking at the very same thing that everybody is, like, kind of like yep. the old school uh, slide projector thing. Yeah, but yep. I used to do that when I was I a actually, kid. Yep. I actually think it. I actually think it makes like in the, you know, this is a little different now with MIDI cues. MIDI cues have fixed some of this. If you're in, yep. if you know, you're doing that game, but like the disjunctive nature of lyrics. And then uh, you, when things can get off, we actually, you mentioned that way early in the conversation, like the disasters is like, so if yeah. we're all together, like there's nothing, there's like, it's, it creates like something like, I'm actually doing the same thing everyone else is doing. Mm-hmm. Now it doesn't look as cool as pro presenter or as clean. Cause there's still like a clock up there or something. Right. Turn it on dark mode. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was about to say, as long <laughs> as it's on dark mode, then you're good. But the, but the, the, the other piece about that, because actually we had this experiment, I was gone and they were like, oh, you know, this one family's like, Christian, should we get a computer, get a pro presenter? Let's get pro presenter. I was like, man, I honestly, I'm not like excited about that because I think it creates so much complication, especially in like this little setting. But I was gone and she's like trying to use Google slides and she's like, it was a total train wreck. Let's go back to notes. <laughs> it was like, so, so yeah. the, but, but the thing Wait, let me uh, let me ask you this. Like if I went to your church and I was like, Christian, I I can't feel I'm not ready to like stand up there and sing or like play the cajon with you or like, you know, but I, I want to help. Can I can would you mind if I did pro presenter? Like someone who's too much experience with pro presenter and various <laughs> other types of stuff, you know, but like cause that's where my mind goes, is like well everything you're talking about of like wanting to do things better and better. Like that's a snowball, man. And like, as soon as that house church, like, if you keep doing that, like, there's a possibility where like people start coming because they want to do this new well, kind of like basement liturgy. You know, like that's like the I, weird thing about all of this stuff. Well, I, I, I don't like. We're not actually trying to be evangelistic. Doesn't matter. Neither were <laughs> neither were we. I mean, there was a portion of the church that well, was, but I'm, like, so it's the other stranger context. things have happened. PVK yeah, is famous, happened. you know. <laughs> The other piece of context is that the people that are there were all like very, very, very hurt. And I know yeah. people talk about the, oh, you're, you're, you're. I was like, okay. And, um, and, and it's not like we're like this. I'm not trying to create a model to, to change. I'm just like, this is, this is like my gift. Okay. But I don't think that, and I have ideas, but I'm not the guy that's just, I want to help my people that I'm with and that's it. I don't, I'm not trying to like impress everybody in Batesville with mm-hmm. what I'm doing and Hey, come check out the new shiny thing. Cause actually I was doing, I'm not doing a whole lot different than what I did when I was on staff actually. So 
People know that. That's fine. But like, um, what what does it mean to serve? Here was an example, like something like, like, well, for if in to that case point of like pro presenter or something, uh, like really. Well, that's kind of what we were talking about, about like the priests. Like, I mean, okay, is Sunday theologically or, or is that, are we all supposed to find our, I mean, I, and me and Alan talked about, the, I talked to him the other day and he really was harping on this. Like, and I think that there's, there's something to that and that there's obviously cultures where that is a huge thing. Um, like, what if the idea to serve was to give to something, no matter what you were giving financially, is like, I, I, we want the place that we come to worship to be beautiful. And we're just going to ask that that's be what everyone re ultimately, mostly is trying to contribute. Things are going to actually stay really simple and low tech and blah, blah, blah. And we're not looking for, okay, because part of the whole serving idea idea is is about getting people invested into a certain being invested in a certain kind of way um yeah. and i would just say be invested in worship i'm not and, and you know and again like there's all sorts of practical things like nurseries and and children it's like so how do we do sunday school part of the liturgy is a is a is a story so after we do most of them, like we do, we pray for the prayer of illumination, which is for the reading of the word. And then a guy gets up and he, he, we've been doing a Bible story, 10 minutes that's aimed at the kids, but everyone loves it. So that's our Sunday school. And, uh, and then, and then we we're streaming in a buddy of ours. We're not streaming in pop. We're not streaming in anybody that is famous. We're streaming in our buddy, who was a part of our church for 10 years that we trust. He just does his sermons from his uh, home office. He's, he's, another, too afraid he's, to, church. he's too afraid to be in front of the, uh, the people of God again. He's at another <laughs> church. But it's like, it's not so much like, it just has to do with trust. It doesn't have to do with, is this the hottest hot? Mm -hmm. You know, like, and I think that's what, that's where I'm at. It's not, it, yeah. it's not, yeah. This, oh, Christian's going to do, we're going to do a house church movement and, and this house church movement is going to ignite the flames of, of, and it's going to revolutionize all of this town we live in. And it's like, I, I don't, that's not. You don't want to be a city taker? Is that what they're called? You know what I'm talking about? Like city takers? That was like a ministry I remember hearing about. Well, like, we don't live in a big enough city for people to care. You know, like they were going to take the city for the kingdom. Oh, you know, yeah. We want to, we want to do, uh, yeah, we want to love this city and do, I mean, we were, we did some of that stuff, but. Yeah, Dude, I'm yeah, yeah, we're about to roll over our our stream yard limit here. So I don't okay, know if you yeah. had anything wanted to add to that. Yeah. Anything in conclusion? Honestly, I'm thankful for for, for just the time and the space. I just feel so nice to talk to a kindred spirit who sounds like uh you're still definitely a lot like you're still in it, you know, you're still in the in the church, in the local body. And so in some ways I'm I'm envious of that. But then I'm also, you know, definitely not envious of having to, you know, make all of those decisions and having to, you know, set up the gear every Sunday. And, and honestly, to have the responsibility of even picking the songs is like seems like a lot of that for me personally, at this point in my life, that sounds like a lot of pressure. Um, and so, you know, but the Lord obviously, you know, once you that's what he's called you to do. So uh, it's just cool to have a, a online friend uh, like you and. That I could talk about this stuff with. So yeah, just appreciate it. Uh, appreciate all the time and attention out there given to us. So yeah, thanks. All right, dude. I'm gonna hit this and we'll end this backstage. Hi, this is Christian Baxter, and you're listening to Yours Truly, a place we go to think out loud.